Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Argon Eon. This is a four bay NAS system powered by a Raspberry Pi 4, and in my opinion, this thing looks super cool. If you're not familiar with Argon 40, these are the guys who made the Argon 1 case for the Raspberry Pi, along with the Argon Neo, some of the best cases for the Pi on the market right now. Now this is a bit different than what they've made before, but we still have access to the GPIO down here. I'm going to pull the back off, and on the bottom we have a Raspberry Pi 4. That's what's going to power this NAS unit, and we have four bays in here. It'll take four 10 terabyte drives, and you can set them up to run in RAID, you can use them individually, but the way this is set up and the way it's shaped, it'll only accept two 3.5 inch drives and two 2.5 inch drives, but you can do kind of any combination you want with those. And it supports SSDs if you don't want to go mechanical with it. Here's a closer look at the four SATA ports that are on this daughter board. And in between the top board and the bottom board, there's a sandwiched Raspberry Pi 4. Now this also brings us dual full-size HDMI ports. Like I said, we still have access to that GPIO. And the Argon Eon comes with a 12 volt 6 amp power supply and it gives us plenty of power for the Raspberry Pi and the drives we want to use in this unit. So up top here, we can go with two 3.5 inch drives right in the middle and two 2.5 inch drives on the outer edges. Or you can go with all 2.5 inch drives, it's really up to you. We do have access to the USB on the Raspberry Pi. We have access to the ethernet. And this mates up with a power control board over GPIO down here. It's got built-in RTC. We can program this to come on and go off at any given time. And the Raspberry Pi is actually cooled by this aluminum case. It's making contact with the Raspberry Pi CPU, so it's not going to overheat anytime soon. The case is constructed of space-grade aluminum, and we do have a fully programmable fan up here to keep those drives nice and cool. So this setup comes with all the hardware you need to put it together. I think they're going to be offering this in a kit with no Raspberry Pi. They might also offer a kit with a Pi, but I'm going to be using two 6 terabyte Iron Wolf drives in this unit. And really, when it comes down to it, I'm only going to be utilizing one of these drives for this video. I'm just going to set this up so I can, uh, you know, have some videos on it. We're going to test some speed and things like that. And I'll definitely be running over Ethernet because that's really how you want to have this thing set up. You could use Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi, but we still have access to that Ethernet port. And it's just going to make everything a lot easier. So these drives go in here pretty easily, and we can mount them from the back here. Comes with all of the hardware we need. I'm going to go ahead and throw my other drive in here and just get them mounted up. So here we are with 12 terabytes of storage, or I could set this up in RAID and just use 6 terabytes of storage to have a little bit of redundancy. And we also have these extra SATA connectors to add two more 2.5 inch drives. Alright, so a little bit of configuration here. Now what I've done is just install Raspberry Pi OS, and I've installed Open Media Vault. You can actually just set this up as an FTP without any extra software installed on Raspberry Pi OS. It's really up to you. Or you could install a standalone operating system specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi to turn it into a NAS. But this way it just makes it a lot easier. Plus, we have the Argon configuration. As you can see, we have that 6 terabyte drive. It's installed. I've got it formatted because I have Open Media Vault ready to go. But let's go ahead and open up the Argon configuration. And from here, we have three choices. We can configure the fan. So if I press number one, go ahead and clear that out. We have always on, we can adjust the temperature, or we can customize the behavior. For me, I would just go with number two here, and it's pretty much set up like I want it to be. So I'll press enter now. And this is just going to give us a little bit of a walkthrough. So at 55 degrees Celsius, how fast do we want that fan to spin up? I'm going to say uh, 30%, just to keep it on nice and quiet. At 60, we'll just go up to 50. And 65, let's do 80. I mean, you can set this up however you want. You might want to customize this to keep the noise down. It's really up to you. But this is here, and it's very easy to use. Next, we can configure the RTC. Now, I have placed a battery inside of here. If we press number 2... We can get right in here and we can update the RTC time, or we can configure the startup and shutdown schedules. And this comes in really handy. This will shut down at a certain time and start back up at a certain time with that RTC set up correctly. It's really great for saving power, and there might be more options down the road, but this is an early script that I was sent over with this prototype unit. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using Open Media Vault, and if you want to get this installed, there's an awesome tutorial over on Pi My Life Up. I'll leave a link to that in the description. 
goes through the steps, everything you need to get this up and running in Raspberry Pi OS, and it's a really great tutorial, and Open Media Vault is very flexible and easy to use. We do have a web GUI, or GUI, that we can actually configure everything in, and this is what it looks like. I just typed in my Raspberry Pi's IP address, I'm on the same exact network, and I can format my drives, I can add new users, I can set this up basically any way I want it to be set up. Another thing I haven't mentioned so far is this does have an OLED display on the top here. This is also the power, reset, shutdown button. Hold it for a couple seconds. It'll power on. And to the naked eye, you won't see it flashing like this. This is just my camera and, you know, the frame rate's not synced up with the OLED display. But before this is officially released, they will have a few other features built into the script we took a look at. And basically what this is going to do is allow this OLED to give us all the information we need about our Raspberry Pi. CPU usage, disk usage, your IP, and all kinds of stuff. I think it's a pretty cool little feature. So now that I have everything set up, I did want to run a quick speed test. And by speed test, I mean real-world transfer speed. So I'm not doing any kind of, you know, synthetic benchmark or anything like that. Just head over to my network. You can see I have my 6 terabyte drive here listed. That's how I set it up in Open Media Vault. And we'll just go ahead and transfer some of these movies over and see what happens. Up there at 100 megabytes per second. This is not megabits. This is megabytes. Big M, big B. We're up there at 100. Ooh, and I did see it. Yeah, it's dipping down to the 60s. Let's try one more here. Not bad at all without any extra configuration, though. The Argon Eon is plugged directly into my Spectrum router. I mean, it's nothing fancy, it's just the router you get. So with some configuration, I'm sure you could get better speeds out of something like this. So real-world transfer speeds are actually looking pretty decent here. Let's go ahead and play one of these files. This would be one of the main use case scenarios, at least for me, is running movies from this NAS or, uh, you know, storing different images on the NAS itself and streaming a 4K HDR video from the Argon Eon right now. What I'm going to do is just skip ahead in the video and just see if it takes any longer to buffer. I mean, as you saw, it had that little tiny hiccup, but it is working great. Let's go with one more. This one's a little lower end, 1080p, 60fps. And I didn't get that little hiccup in the middle when I skipped right into the video. Okay, so all of those files that I just transferred over were anywhere from 500 megabytes up to around a gigabyte. Let's go with an 8 gigabyte image. This is just the Raspberry Pi OS image. And uh, one of the main things I would use this for, besides video, is storing larger images and ROMs. Getting a little less on that transfer speed, and it kind of fluctuates in between 70 and 100. I can definitely live with this, especially given that this is just powered by a Raspberry Pi. I haven't gone through, messed around with any of the settings in Open Media Vault on the Raspberry Pi or even in my router. This is just plugged directly into my Spectrum provided router, and we're getting these kind of speeds. So yeah, I mean, this is looking decent. Overall, I do like the design of the Eon. I think it looks really good. They state that it's kind of a cyberpunk look, and I can definitely see that. I would love to test this out with some SSDs, but unfortunately, I just don't have any large SSDs on hand that, you know, I can sacrifice for a NAS setup. So one thing I kind of wish they would have done is made enough room for four 3.5-inch drives. I actually have four of these 6-terabyte drives that, uh, you know, I could utilize in this. But unfortunately, we can only do two 3.5s and two 2.5s. But one of the good things about a NAS powered by a Raspberry Pi is that, you know, a lot of people who are getting something like this, it might be their first NAS, so they don't already have those extra drives laying around. So from the start, you can just go with four 2.5-inch drives and just keep it all normalized across the board. The Eon's going to support up to 40 terabytes of storage, so that's 10 terabytes per drive, but I personally do like to have a little bit of redundancy, so the maximum that I'll be able to set this up with those extra backup drives is 20 terabytes. That way, when I transfer something over to my 20 terabyte NAS here, it actually automatically backs up to the other 20 terabytes. I have two backups of that, just in case one of them gets corrupted. But yeah, I do think this is a cool little product, and if you're interested in checking it out, I will leave a few links in the description. I will have one more video coming up soon. Uh, they are releasing a little more software for the Eon. I really can't mention it here, but keep an eye out because they do have some really cool stuff coming for this unit.
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or if you want to see anything else running on this or even how to set one of these up, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.